Those of you who like stories, you'll love Luke. Because of all the Gospels, Luke has the best stories. There's the story of the Good Samaritan, it's only in Luke. There's the story of the parable of the, of the uh, prodigal son, that's only in Luke. But in my opinion, there is no better story in all of Luke and in all of the Gospels than the story of the road to Emmaus. It gave birth to the Emmaus community and the Via de Cristo community and the Chrysalis community. It has given birth to many and many stories of how God touches our lives on the Emmaus roads of life. As I shared with these four young people yesterday and again this morning and again at 11.15, the power of this story will touch your life. What I'd like to do is I'd like to read it together. There's no way, it's a long story, and there's no real way to shorten it. So let's read it together, and I'd like to make a couple of comments as we go along. Luke says, now that same day, what day is it? It's Easter. That same day, Easter Sunday, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. I've always struggled with that text. Bob and Diane have been married 92 years. They don't see each other for three days, and they don't recognize each other when they do see each other. Has Jesus ever come to you and you've never recognized him? And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he said to them, Do you get a sense that Jesus is goading them along here? What things? I think that's funny. But Jesus has a sense of humor. Tell me about the things that happened to me. They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we, notice the verb tense, had hoped, past tense. We used to hope, we don't hope anymore. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us. Because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over, so he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took and blessed and broke and gave the bread. We say those words every Sunday morning. It's not happenstance that we say them. He took and blessed and broke and gave the bread. In other words, did you know that this town this morning is named Emmaus? Did you know that because of his presence in this world, 21st century Christians are in fact first century Christians? 
because he broke the bread. And he breaks the bread. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished out of their sight. And he sa they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was taken to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together and they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's pray together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's not the place. Emmaus is nothing more than a two-horse town seven miles northwest of Jerusalem whose only claim to fame was that they had no claim to fame. There are 31,173 verses in the Bible. And this is the only verse in all of those 31,000 where Emmaus is even mentioned. It's not the place. It's not the people. The two people that Jesus met on the road to Emmaus, one of them, Cleopas, like Emmaus, is never mentioned again anywhere in the Bible, and we don't even know the other guy's name. They are nobodies. It's not even the time. Luke says that it was Easter Sunday, but it could have just as easily been Monday morning or Tuesday afternoon or Saturday evening. God is no more bound up by time than God is by death. He can show up in your life at 2 o'clock in the morning just as easily as he can show up at high noon. It's none of that. The power of the story of the road to Emmaus is in the encounter, in the experience. Because of Easter, God is likely to show up to anybody, anywhere, in any way, at any time. In Matthew's gospel, it's on a mountain to the 11 remaining disciples. In John's gospel, it's at the Sea of Tiberias to seven of them at breakfast. Here in Luke, as you just heard, it's, in, it's at Emmaus, to only two of them in the breaking of the bread. How God comes to you is completely up to God. Whether or not you will see him or hear the whisper in your, of his voice in your life is up to you. But ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this. There is no place so common and ordinary but that God will not come and use those places and those people to touch your life and grab your attention. No place. Her name is Lily. I met her two years ago at the Spirit in the Desert Retreat Center in Carefree, Arizona. She is a member of the housekeeping staff at that center. We got talking back and forth that week, and she did a wonderful job of keeping us in towels and taking care of our rooms. So at the end of our stay, Sharon and I went to, I don't even remember, I think it was Target, to buy a $25 gift certificate for Lily. I th thought nothing of it until this past March when we went back. Lily was there, and the minute, I mean the minute, she saw us coming into the door, she came up to us and thanked us for the gift. With tears in her eyes, she said that no one had ever given her a gift like that before. 
We saw each other that week, and at the last day when we were there in March, Lily came up to us with an Easter bunny and said, would you give this to your granddaughter? I would like her to have it. And then she said, then she said, the next time you are at Spirit in the Desert, I would like to entertain you in my home. I'm going to take my journal with me to that event. I have a feeling that I will be encountering the risen Lord in the breaking of that bread. Sydney and Elena and Matthias and John. Today, your journey with Christ and Christ's journey with you continues. I don't know how or when or where, but that journey one day will take you to Emmaus. The risen Christ wants to touch your life and use your lives to touch others. Those encounters with Jesus can happen anywhere, at any time, in any way. As a confirmed adult member of this congregation and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, your high and holy calling, as we talked about last night, is to see and celebrate and share those encounters. Because when you do, God will touch your life and he will use others, yours to touch others. <coughs> Come to think of it, ladies and gentlemen, that is our calling too. On the road to Emmaus, I touched Lily's life and she touched my life. And somewhere in all of that, God touched both of us. And that's my prayer for all of us this morning. That somewhere in Marietta or Mableton or Macon, God will touch your life in a way that it will never be the same again. And when that happens, either through an Easter bunny or an apple pie or a letter or a kindness, when that happens, each of us will know the greatest truth of all. That Easter is not a day of the week. It's a way of life. Because Jesus Christ, in all its forms, is made known in the breaking of the bread. Amen.